After signing the final divorce papers, Marion walked out of the house with smile, but she never thought such a dreadful event would bring her so much relief. It was the first time she had smiled in a long while. It so happened that during the divorce process, she inherited her mother's estate. Her mother had been ill for a long time, yet even in her hardest moments, she tried to support her daughter. This tragedy pushed Marion to fully accept that the divorce was necessary. Her husband Jeff had given her no support. When everyone found out about her mother's illness, he immediately started talking about renovations. This room will be our bedroom. I've already decided to paint it in an elegant and olive green, but just the wall where the bed will be, he said, showing her a sketch. Jeff, are you out of your mind? Marion almost cried out. Are you serious? My mother is fighting for her life, and you're already planning what to do with her property. You disgust me. That conversation marked the beginning of the rift in Marion's family. At first, she didn't give it much thought but Jeff consistently brought up the renovation every week. Each time, she tried to change the subject, but he stubbornly kept going. Because of this, Marion cried more and more, visiting her mother daily. Jeff just smirked. Arguments began, and he started leaving home to stay with his own mother, where he would complain about Marion. It was difficult for Marion to accept that the person she loved could be so indifferent to her grief. After a month of torment and another argument, she finally told him she wanted a divorce. Are you serious right now? Jeff asked. Yes, and I'm very serious. Right now it feels like the most rational decision I could make. You realize you're going to destroy everything over something so foolish? We've been broken for a long time. If you think my mother's illness is foolish, then I'm 100% right to want a divorce. Jeff quickly packed his things. In three years of marriage, he hadn't accumulated much. He always believed that new things should only be bought for their own home, not for a rented apartment. Marion, on the other hand, was left in the apartment, wondering how she would afford it alone on her small salary. It had been Jeff who insisted they live in the city centre, where rent was expensive. With the two, only Jeff had a decent salary. Marion, working as a paramedic, had put down the deposit on the apartment without even checking its condition. She trusted there wouldn't be any issues. But the landlady said she would need to inform her husband since he had signed the lease. Thankfully, Jeff didn't object and signed all the paperwork. But a few months later, Jeff started calling, demanding that she return the money she had given to the landlady. Jeff, I've already spent it. I had to buy medicine for my mom. I don't care at all, he yelled into the phone. I gave you that money, and now I want it back. You had no right to spend it on your whims. But I told you it was for medicine. I don't care. Throwing the phone onto the bed, Marion began to cry. Just then, there was a soft knock at the door. She quickly wiped her tears, not wanting her mother to see her like this. Sweetheart, her mother peeked into the room. Is everything okay? Yes, Mom, everything's fine. Why did you get out of bed? You've been feeling weak this morning. Let me help you back. And I can read to you if you'd like. Her mother nodded. And hand in hand, they walked back to the bedroom. Once her mother was settled in bed, Marion curled up beside her and picked up her mother's favorite book, some historical novel she reread nearly every year. Did Jeff call? Her mother asked sudden, sir. Yes. Give him the money back. Let him leave you alone. I don't have it any more, Marion admitted quietly. You shouldn't have spent it on me. I told you I had money and could buy anything I needed. A lot of the medicine is even given to me for free. But I bought you the expensive medicine, and it helped. Look, you're feeling better now, her mother nodded. And the doctor approved it and adjusted your treatment. Who knows, you might even be up and running in a couple of months. But sadly, the miracle didn't happen, and now Marion was returning to an empty, large apartment. She had even gotten a cat to keep herself from feeling so lonely. Although she wasn't entirely alone, now her sister had come to stay with her, so they could face all the difficulties together. Just recently, Marion had received a significant inheritance, her mother's apartment, and a large sum of money from her mother's savings account. 
her older sister Carrie, who lived in Germany, had been sending money to their mother over the years, but their mother had saved it instead of spending it. When it came time to claim the inheritance, Carrie was surprised. Marion had even worried that her sister might be upset that she didn't get anything, but that wasn't the case. Carrie said she had discussed the will with their mother some time ago and agreed with all its terms. However, Jeff and his mother seemed to think they could get a piece of it and had been delaying the divorce process. Jeff would bring medical notes to the court claiming he was too sick to attend the hearings, or he would tell the judge that he couldn't live without Marion and didn't want the divorce. As a result, the process had dragged on for nearly a year. Putting away the final paper that declared her officially divorced, Marion quickly dialed her sister's number. It's done, I'm free. Can you pick me up? Of course I'm right outside the courthouse. I'll be there in five minutes, her sister replied. Marion sat on a bench outside the courthouse, scrolling through the news on her phone. She didn't even notice when her former mother-in-law approached her. Mrs. Barrett had to clear her throat a few times to get Marion's attention. I heard you the first time, Marion said, locking her phone. You must be so proud of yourself, Mrs. Barrett said with a sour expression. Her sharply drawn black eyebrows were raised high, and her lips, painted in bright raspberry lipstick, were pursed so tightly the lipstick had smeared out, saying, Do you need something? Marion asked, shrugging. What do you mean? Marion didn't understand the question. My son provided for you, cherished you, treated you like a queen, and you... What about her? A voice interrupted. Carrie had just arrived, and not seeing her sister approached Mrs. Barrett. The older woman slowly turned her head toward Carrie, giving her a disdainful look from head to toe. She knows, Mrs. Barrett muttered. I don't know, insisted her sister. Tell me what kind of person is my sister? Carrie, don't. Let's go, Marion grabbed her purse, preparing to leave. We'll talk later, her former mother-in-law said, almost threateningly. Have you and Jeff decided what you're going to do with the apartment? Marion decided not to respond. All her ex-husband's and his mother's dreams about the girl's inheritance revolved around her, but she could transfer it all to someone else if she wished. Marion grabbed her sister's hand and pulled her toward the parked car. Knowing Carrie's temperament, she realized that if they stayed any longer, her sister might attack this woman, leaving nothing of her. Did you even hear what she said to you? Carrie fumed as she started the car. I heard. Marion sighed heavily. You won't believe it, but they started planning for the apartment and making arrangements even before I got the inheritance. What a nightmare! How can anyone profit off someone else's misfortune? Mom was right when she warned you to think carefully about that marriage. Your Jeff isn't worth a penny. If I ever see him, I'd spit in his face. Marion turned to the window, lost in thought. When she first introduced Jeff to her mother, she immediately said she didn't like him. He was over thirty, still living with his mother, and already divorced. His constant unrealistic plans and silly jokes irritated her mother. Over the years, Jeff had invested in several dubious business ventures, but each one failed. Marion didn't pay much attention since it didn't affect their budget, but her mother kept saying that a sensible man wouldn't waste money on nonsense, but would think about the family and their well-being. What do they even want from you? Carrie interrupted her thoughts. The apartment, Marion replied shortly. The apartment. Yeah, they were making plans even before the divorce. Carrie swore. She had only met Jeff once, at the wedding. Do you have work today? Carrie asked, trying to change the subject. No. I'm working the night shift tomorrow. I'm off today. Any plans? None. Marion had no desire to go anywhere but seeing her sister's determination, she realized there was no way out. She braced herself for her sister to suggest going to a restaurant or club, but Carrie had something else in mind. So, Mom once told me you had a dog. I did. Marion sighed sadly. Bucky, a little toy terrier, had been her dream for a long time, and after saving up, 
She had bought herself a companion while living with Jeff, but after the divorce, Jeff decided he would keep the dog, claiming Marion's irregular work schedule made it impossible for her to take proper care of the animal. Marion missed her beloved dog terribly. He stayed with Jeff. Though I don't know why I'm asking, I bet he convinced you the dog wasn't right for you, Carrie said, watching as Marion quietly began to cry. Stop crying, Carrie said firmly. How long would it take to get to his place? He'll probably drop his mum off first and then go home. What are you planning to do? Marion asked in confusion. We're getting your dog back. Do you have the papers? Yes, but Jeff kept the passport and vaccination records. I only have the purchase agreement. That's enough. On paper, the dog is yours, so you have every right to take him. But how will I take care of him with my job? I won't be able to give him proper attention. You marry him, protested. That's just what Jeff made you think. It's nonsense. You've got a small dog that only needs to be walked once a day, and you've got enough time for that. Marion, we're getting him back. Your cat could use some company too. Those words lifted Marion's spirits. She began to imagine sneaking into Jeff's apartment with her sister, stealing the dog while his new girlfriend screamed, and driving away triumphantly. Come on, give me the address. Marion told her where to go, her eyes now sparkling with excitement. With a sister like Carrie, she was starting to feel much better. It was like a second wind was opening up inside her. Carrie had always been a decisive person, doing whatever she wanted. Now she was passing that energy on to her sister. Once we get your friend, we'll celebrate your divorce. I don't want to go anywhere, Marion protested. We're not going anywhere, Carrie said, making a sharp turn. We'll order sushi, buy some wine and have a quiet night at home. We've got a lot to talk about. We haven't seen each other in a while, and, uh, and my three-month leave is almost over. I've been busy since I got here, but today I've got the time to spend with you. Carrie didn't explain what had been keeping her busy, and Marion didn't ask she never liked prying into personal matters. If her sister wanted to tell her, she would. So, are you ready? Carrie asked as they pulled up to Jeff's apartment building. Completely, Marion replied more confidently. The sisters jumped out of the car and ran to the entrance. They didn't even need to ring the intercom someone had conveniently left the door open. They rushed up to the right floor and began banging on the apartment door. A dog barked from inside, and soon the door opened. A blonde woman in pajamas stood in the doorway, clearly confused. The moment she recognized Jeff's ex-wife, she tried to shut the door but Carrie blocked it with her foot. Excuse us, but we need to come in. What do you think you're doing? The woman yelled. My sister is here to take what belongs to her, you, Carrie said. A small dog came running out, barking loudly. Marion immediately scooped Bucky into her arms, holding him tightly. She had missed her little friend so much. Get the dog's papers, Marion demanded once Bucky had calmed down in her arms. Jeff won't like this. I'm calling him right now, the blonde said, folding her arms. We don't care about Jeff, Carrie replied. The dog is legally hers, so stop making things difficult and bring the passport and vaccination records. The blonde hesitated for a moment, then reluctantly brought a small folder with the documents a minute later. Now leave before Jeff comes back, she said, slamming the door shut. Marion was overjoyed to have her dog back. Although she knew her ex-husband would call and shout at her, she no longer cared. I bet she didn't give you everything, Carrie remarked. The dog should have food, bowls and all the other stuff. Carrie was ready to knock on the door again, but Marion stopped her. We'll go to the store. We don't know what they were feeding Bucky anyway. He's lost weight. I still have some of his old food, but I'll buy the rest. Her sister nodded in agreement, and the two women walked resolutely toward the car. As soon as they gay settled in and arranged the trembling dog in the back seat, he noticed them as soon as he parked his car. Carrie gave him a sly smile and waved. Jeff stared at them, perplexed. Let's go, Marion said nervously. Before he comes over, I'd want to talk to him. All right, let's head to the store, Carrie said, pulling away. 
The women first stopped at a cafe to order sushi, and then to pass the time while they waited. They went shopping for wine and other food. They also managed to stop by the pet store to pick up everything they needed for Bucky. Marion was worried about leaving the dog alone in the car, but her sister reassured her that nothing would happen and that they would be quick, so Bucky wouldn't even have time to get lonely. Once they got home, Marion noticed that her ex-husband had called eight times and left three angry messages. She decided not to respond, knowing another argument would lead nowhere good. While the dog got acquainted with the cat, since last time Bucky stayed with Marion, the cat wasn't there, the sisters sat in the kitchen to talk. What are you planning to renovate this place? Kerry asked. I haven't really thought about it, Marion answered honestly. Well, you should. This apartment definitely needs a good renovation. Mom wouldn't mind, I'm sure. Marianne nodded. Especially since you've got a decent amount of money saved up. And if you need more, I'll help. Her sister smiled and took Marianne's hand, signaling that she'd always be there to support her. Carrie, tell me, what important things have you been dealing with this whole time? Oh, Carrie sighed mysteriously. Remember when I told you I was talking to a guy from Germany? Marion nodded. Well, we got married, and I've been sorting out the paperwork. Carrie went to the hallway and pulled a new passport from her bag. Marion couldn't believe it, and when she saw the documents, she could barely pronounce her sister's husband's name. Let's drink to two important events in our lives, Carrie suggested. We'll toast your divorce from that jerk wheel. They both laughed and clinked their glasses. The evening flew by and the sisters went to bed content. The next morning, Carrie suggested they go shopping for new furniture. She kept trying to convince Marion to start renovating, pointing out that the apartment still reminded her of difficult times. Marion was starting to agree, knowing her sister was right. She needed to change things to bring about better days. That evening, Marion was getting ready for work. Carrie stayed home to pack her things since she was leaving in three days. She wanted to pack early to avoid forgetting anything in the rush, especially since she planned to visit their aunt for a day or two before she left. Arian had completely forgotten about her problems, as the evening and night at work turned out to be unusually hectic. Call after call kept them busy. When they received the next address, Marion tensed up they had to go to her ex-mother-in-law's apartment. I had no desire to see her at all, but there was no choice since all the other crews were occupied. The call was routine high blood pressure. Her ex-mother-in-law didn't say a word and even pretended not to recognize Marion, which allowed her to relax. But once they had finished all the necessary procedures, Mrs. Barrett decided to hold Marion back. She nodded to the other medics signaling that everything was fine. Her colleagues understood who they were visiting and figured it would be best not to interfere, so they waited by the car. Marion. Her ex-mother-in-law began in a sugary voice. We didn't get off to the best start, did we? Marion remained silent, watching to see what would happen next. The woman was alone, so Marion felt no fear. What could an angry old lady do? At worst, yell or file a complaint which might cost her a bonus. You and my Jeff didn't live together for long, but you had a good time, didn't you? Mrs. Barrett continued. Your son already has a new girlfriend. What do you want from me? Marion was confused by what the woman was getting at. Remember all the good times? Her ex-mother-in-law tried to take her hand, but Marion pulled away. She stepped toward the door, ready to leave if necessary. Realizing she was scaring Marion, Mrs. Barrett raised her hands to show she meant no harm. All right, I see you're not getting the hints. Her tone abruptly changed. Here's the deal. The apartment you inherited is too big for you alone. You're single now. That's none of your business. Marion cut her off. I know you're alone. Otherwise you wouldn't have taken your little dog back from Jeff. Here's my proposal. You sell the apartment, split the money with Jeff and you both buy new places. Your mom left you some money, so you could afford something nice. Marion was stunned, frozen in shock. She stared at her ex-mother-in-law in disbelief, unable to comprehend that the woman was making such a suggestion. You've lost your mind, Marion said, zipping up her jacket. 
Do you really think I'm that stupid and will do what you and your son want? What's the problem? It's only fair. You're seriously out of your mind. I'm not selling anything. Good luck to you and your son, Marion said and nearly ran out of the apartment. She was shaking from shock. She had thought that once the divorce papers were signed, Jeff and his mother would leave her alone, but now that they realized her assets weren't being divided in the divorce, they were trying to pressure her from all sides. She didn't even check the time as she stepped out of the elevator and pulled out her phone, calling her ex -abel. He was on another call the first two times she tried. Marion dialed Jeff's number again. After a few rings, he finally answered. What do you want? He asked irritably. What do you want from me? You and your mother have completely lost it. Don't yell. I already have a headache, he replied wearily. I take it you think my property belongs to you too. Why is your mother insisting on splitting it? She's right. We had a good life together. I spent a lot of money on you, gave you gifts. Now it's your turn to pay it back. I didn't think I had to return everything you gave me. Fine, it'll be done. And remember this, the inheritance is mine alone, and neither you nor your mother get to decide how I use it. If I want, I'll sell it, rent it, or give it away. And I can spend the money however I want. You get nothing, Marion said before shoving her phone into her jacket pocket. Her entire team was staring at her in shock. She had forgotten she was at work, and her colleagues had heard everything. She felt embarrassed. The driver glanced at her nervously, but the senior paramedic offered her support. I've been through a divorce myself, and my mother-in-law tried to take my apartment. Don't let them manipulate you. You did the right thing? Now get in the car, we've got another call. As she sat in her seat... Marion started to mentally list everything her husband had given her during their three years of marriage. They had taken a trip to the seaside. He had bought her nice leather boots, a bag, a couple of gold rings, a new phone, and earrings. After running through the list, she texted her sister to see if she was home. It turned out that the girl changed her mind about visiting her aunt because everyone there had fallen ill and Carrie didn't want to catch anything right before her flight. The rest of Marion's shift went smoothly. In the morning, when she got home, she immediately started working on the tasks she had written down the day before. Woken up by the noise, Carrie came into the living room. What are you doing? He told me I should return all the gifts he gave me. Can you believe that? He hinted like we had a good life together, and he gave me all sorts of trinkets, and now I have to share them. He's implying that I should split the apartment with him too. What a nightmare her sister exclaimed. Let me help you. I've almost gathered everything. Just two things left. Which ones? Get ready, we're going to the bank. I'm withdrawing money. I need a new phone. And this one, she twirled the mobile phone in her hand. I have to return it. With that, she smashed the phone against the floor several times, shattering the screen completely. Then she looked at the broken phone with satisfaction and tossed it into the gifted bag. What else did he ask for? Her sister watched in amazement. We took a few vacations by the sea. Marion knew that she couldn't return those. After thinking for a moment, she shrugged it off, realizing that Jeff had been there with her and had enjoyed the vacations too. That's it, Carrie, get ready, we're going to throw this stuff at his feet. Just a minute, I'll get dressed. Carrie liked seeing her sister so determined. Marion was like a fury, burning all bridges to start a new life. And so the two sisters sat in the car, driving off to get revenge on the ex-husband. The atmosphere was so light and fun that they felt like singing and dancing. On their way to Jeff's, they stopped by the bank and then a phone shop. Marion decided to change not only her phone but also her number. Now, Neither her ex-mother-in-law nor her ex-husband could call and ruin her mood or push for property division again. Marion decided not to call Jeff to tell him she was coming. She knew what time he left for work, and she planned to arrive just in time to hand him the bag. Carrie decided to stay in the car and watch. Marion approached Jeff's car and stood there, waiting. What are you doing here? I've decided to return your gifts. You hinted at it yesterday. Didn't you, she said. 
placing the bag on the hood of his car and smiling. She never thought that a few years of living with someone she loved could fit into a small purse. I hope we never see each other again. Jeff stood there, shifting awkwardly from foot to foot. He was uncomfortable, while Marion just mocked him, but she had never seen Jeff so hurt. She wanted to laugh, but all she did was walk back to the car, where her sister was waiting. Jeff took the bag, threw it onto the back seat of his car, and drove off to work. Marion got into the car, watching as Jeff's car disappeared around the corner. Her sister started the engine, and for a moment silence enveloped them. The exhaustion from everything that had happened suddenly gave way to a lightness and a sense of freedom. That was amazing, Carrie exclaimed, her eyes sparkling. How do you feel? Marion smiled, looked at her sister, and quietly replied. Like I've closed one door and opened a new one. They drove through the city streets, bathed in the light of the morning sun. The leaves on the trees fluttered in the wind, as if welcoming their new path. Calm and clarity filled Marion's heart, and she felt that nothing was holding her back anymore. What now? Carrie asked as they stopped at a red light. What's the plan? Marion thought for a moment, then turned to her sister with a smile. Plans? Oh, I've got plenty of them, and I'm on vacation. First, I'm buying a ticket. I want to see new places, places I've long dreamed of but never had the courage to visit. Now I'm free from all of this and ready to live for myself. Carrie smiled, seeing her sister bloom like a flower opening up. Well, the world is waiting for you, she said. Touching her hand, let's go home and pack our bags. Marion nodded, looking ahead at the sky which seemed to promise new opportunities. She knew there would be challenges and joys ahead, but the most important thing was that now she was free to choose her own path. And that was the best feeling in the world. Dear listener, if you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and definitely leave a comment. It's very important for my channel.